and welcome to the Your Food Matters podcast. I'm Dr. Sue Kleiner. I'm here with my wonderful friend and colleague, Eric Bustillo. And hey, we are here today to talk to you about why protein matters, uh, telling you the ins and outs, the ups and downs, you know, keep it simple, stupid to start, and then go into the serious specifics as we move along. We're going to do at least probably three uh, sessions or episodes on protein, and so we're going to try and keep these short and sweet so that you can think of them as the basics or the intro, uh, a little bit more intermediate, and then the super advanced stuff that will maybe a little bit more personalized to you and your life. If you enjoy our podcast, please share it with your friends. We are on just about all the podcast platforms today, as well as on YouTube. You can find us under the Move Nutrition Network channel. Then you can watch us as well as hear us. So I'm going to swing this over to Eric and let him get us started. Thank you, Sue. Uh, I think the key word there was uh, try <laughs> to keep it short. Uh, once, <laughs> once we get into our rabbit holes, we For get sure. into our rabbit holes. <laughs> but where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> uh, you know, protein is something that I, uh, I'm pretty passionate about. Um, and uh, a lot of the people that have been mentors of mine and, and, and friends in the nutrition game I think uh, uh, oftentimes talk a lot about protein, including yourself. Um, it's, I feel like protein is oftentimes such a, a misunderstood macronutrient. Uh, and for anyone who's listening, uh, just in case, macronutrients are your protein, carbohydrate, and fat. So they do provide calories uh, when you consume them. And protein, at least in my opinion, and, and Sue, I'd be curious to hear how you feel about this, but I kind of consider protein like the the master macronutrient and maybe I am a little bit biased being uh, as my friend and former professor Dr. Tanya Rivera from Florida International University says uh, I got this from her uh, being a protein <laughs> pusher um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I think that I'm a little bit biased um, but I just feel like it's such an important macronutrient that in just in general, in, in society perhaps, it, it gets misunderstood uh, and, and I think there's different reasons for oh, yeah. it, but would you kind of so, consider I, it the same, know, like the ma two master reasons. macronutrient? One is it, it's unique among the three macronutrients. While it can provide energy if we need it to, um, in order to provide energy, we have to lop off the, the unique part of the protein compound which is the nitrogen moiety or the amino acid part, the, the thing that carries nitrogen, amino. Um, that's what makes it unique and fun function differently than carbohydrate or fat can function in the body. So there are properties to protein that only protein can do. And then secondly, it is kind of the coder, right? If we think, if we think of you know, what, what's, what's, um, how do we um, write the messages in the body? Protein has such an essential role. So I think that, that you're right. You know, it kind of is the master macro. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I like how you said that, the coder. Because, uh, you know, when, when you think of protein, uh, at least what I've come to find is protein is – it's for muscle, and that's all that it does. It's only for, for muscle and building muscle, which, I mean, it's definitely an important part of it. Uh, but I think a lot of times people don't even exactly know what protein is. Um, so, and I'll share a story here. One time I was, and this is why education, I feel, is so important um, in, in lifestyle and habit change. You know, even talking about something like obesity, and when people say that obesity is a choice, I say, you know, ultimately, as adults, we could say everything is our choice, so to speak. But to just simply say that obesity is a choice without context, I say I, it's, it's very wrong because it's not 100% a choice. It's partially a choice, but then there's so many other things like education. 
So before I go on an obesity <laughs> tangent, which I'm not going to do, I'm, I'm focused. I'm going to give you a little high five there um, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Keep me on track. Uh, squirrel. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, uh, I was giving a, 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 a community uh, education uh, presentation one time. And, and this was individuals in a, a, a lower socioeconomic uh, community. So I asked them to give me examples of, of protein. And there was a gentleman in the group who confidently said uh, rice. And although he's not technically wrong because there is some protein in rice, uh, I think it's safe to say that rice is predominantly a carbohydrate uh, when we're looking at it as a macronutrient. Uh, and then, of course, I went on to, to explain to him that although rice, it, it does contain some protein, it, it, it truly is more so of a, a carbohydrate. And then we went on to talk about different food examples of protein, such as eggs, chicken, yogurt, protein shakes, uh, and something like be beans and lentils that are also a carbohydrate, but maybe higher in protein than just rice alone. Uh, and that was a little bit of an aha moment. This was way early in my career. I, I, I may have even been a student or intern. Either way, education is huge because people might not even know exactly what protein is. And if someone thinks that rice is a protein, and as a practitioner, I'm just telling them, hey, make sure you're eating more protein. And then they just start eating more rice. I'm not saying that rice is bad. But now if they focus on getting more rice and they think they're getting protein and they are and now they're not getting enough protein, that can introduce a whole host of, of other issues. Uh, so I think kind of getting down into exactly what protein is could be so good for, Eric, for folks listening. So Eric, what are the you know? fundamentals? What is protein? Nutrition 101. So when we're looking at protein, um, it is a macronutrient that is made up of amino acids. So these amino acids are like the building blocks of our bodies, our cells, our tissue. Um, and ultimately, when it comes down to it, protein as a macronutrient, it does provide calories. For every gram that we consume of protein, we're getting four calories. Uh, but because it has these amino acids, its role is very different, like you mentioned, from carbohydrate and, and fat. Uh, and these amino acids, there we have some essential amino acids and we have some non-essential amino acids. The essential amino acids, uh, they're called essential because we need to consume them. Our body can't produce them. Uh, so like, let's say vitamin D, for example. Vitamin D, our body can't produce it under the sunlight, for example. Uh, but something like these essential amino acids, our, our body won't be able to produce them, so we need to consume them from a food source. Um, and we have nine essential amino acids, uh, and generally speaking, the best place to get these amino acids from is going to be uh, animal source foods. Uh, they're complete proteins, and a complete protein is something that does contain all of the essential amino acids. Um, and that could be things like chicken, fish, steak, uh, whey protein shake, eggs, yogurt, that will have the essential amino acids. Um, but then we also have the non-essential amino acids, um, and those, I mean, our body can produce them generally from the essential amino acids. Uh, but if we were to look at something like plant-based foods, uh, we can still get amino acids and protein from these plant-based foods. Oftentimes, they are not as uh, high quality, in air quotes, as an animal source food uh, because of the bioavailability, so how well will our body use this protein, um, and also just the content of the amino acids. Uh, sometimes we might even have to mix and match those foods to try to get the same bang for our buck that we would get from an animal so, source so food. So you know? kind of paraphrasing a little bit, um, the, we, we get these essential amino acids from all kinds of protein-rich foods and even foods that we don't think of as protein-rich, like that rice. But the, the difference is that in, uh, in animal-based foods, we get a complement of 
all the essential amino acids in the proportions that our body needs them in order to put them all to work. And we need all the essential amino acids in the right ratios or proportionate to each other in order to make new proteins and to put them to work in our bodies. When we consume plant-based foods um, predominantly but not exclusively because soy, for instance, today carries all the essential amino acids. Um, and when we um, manufacture uh, plant-rich foods, sort of, you know, you could think of whether it's a protein supplement or many of the um, plant-based protein foods that are processed and you can purchase in the store, they have combined uh, maybe uh, several different kinds of beans, um, maybe with a different grain. And when you combine grains and beans or, you know, rice and peas or, uh, you know, n numerous other almost um, combinations that we find traditionally in cultural food patterns, while each individual food, one bean, one grain, may not have the full complement of essential amino acids, in the end, when you put them all together, you get that. And um, when I was in training, we used to say that you had to eat them together during the day to get the benefit. But now we understand is, as long as you get enough protein all day long, even if you are exclusively vegan, you can get in um, a, a, the wide array of essential amino acids that you need in the proportions that you need that are highly available and useful for you. Um, but there is that caveat. You do need to focus on that every day. Uh, if you, all you eat are pinto beans all day long, you will be low in certain of the essential amino acids. And when that happens, you can't make the tissues that you need in your body. You have something called a limiting amino acid, meaning one that's lower than the body needs, and it will hold back the use of all the other essential amino acids available. So now that we've gone down the rabbit hole into all of that, um, in, in the concept of food, if you, are in, uh, if you consume animal foods uh, as protein-rich foods in your diet, it's typically nothing that you need to think of as far as getting in all the essential amino acids. If you are vegan, meaning you don't have any dairy, you have no eggs in your diet, no fish, no other animal sourced proteins, then not only, you know, do you need to have a wide variety of protein rich plant foods during the day, but you probably need a little bit more. We think about 10% more than the person who's eating animal foods as their protein sources because the foods are higher in fiber. Sometimes the protein um, sort of bonds to the fiber and it goes out and you, it's not all available to you. So eating a little bit higher protein intake as a vegan is highly advisable. And speaking of a 10% number, because um, I mentioned earlier that we oftentimes think of protein as being important for muscle, and that's it. The conversation kind of ends there. Um, and it is extremely important for muscle and muscle recovery, uh, whether you're an athlete or not an athlete. Um, but I bring up the 10% number that you had mentioned about maybe 10% more, uh, because we find that approximately... Uh, from the protein that we consume, it's estimated that around 10% of what we're consuming is going to our muscles. The rest, like the other like 90% or so, is going to all the other things that protein is needed for, such as uh, immune support, uh, different tissues throughout our body, not just our, our muscle tissue, uh, cellular health as well, and cellular like rebuilding and those sorts of things. Um, so I think it's important for people to keep that in mind too. And I love that you mentioned the vegan population because I've worked with a few individuals who uh, were vegan and then ch changed their mind or they were still vegan um, and they were under consuming protein. And you can kind of start seeing it uh, negatively affect their health in some way, either their immune system or even like maybe uh, skin and nails were getting affected and right. their recovery right. from 
right. their training was and, getting you know, affected too. Other really too, important so. functions that, like you said, we don't think of right away. Um, appetite regulation. You know, all hormone regulation is is interfaces with protein metabolism. Blood pressure regulation interfaces with protein metabolism. Brain chemicals, along with, of course, the tissue in your brain, and which is constantly also recycling along with the rest of your body. So, so, you know, like you said, so important. But to be careful and understand, protein exclusively doesn't work well either. Because if you don't have enough carbohydrate, if you don't have enough fat in your diet, then you start to use protein as energy. And now it's not available for the functions that we were just talking about because what happens to it, it's marvelous. The body is absolutely amazing. Um, when, we, when, we are, when we have low access to energy, not enough carb, not enough fat, um, together, you know, if you have lots of fat and not enough carb, we're also going to break apart some protein. Um, but, but when you don't have enough energy coming in, your body will, as I said, lop off that nitrogen moiety, the part of, of amino acids that make them useful in, in the exclusive functions that they have in the body. It will remove the nitrogen and the protein becomes essentially then a carbohydrate. It looks like a carbohydrate. It gets used like a carbohydrate. But now you don't have it available to do the functions that only protein can do. So you still need carb, you still need fat, and you need plenty of protein. You explained that so nicely. I, uh, I think that, that it's important for people to know that because we'll often refer to carbohydrate uh, as being right. protein sparing or muscle sparing. And people were kind of like, wait, what? Like, isn't that supposed to be protein? It's like, no. So the carbohydrates help the protein make sure it's doing exactly. what it's supposed to be doing in our body instead exactly. of being used as right. carbohydrate. Right, because once it's really used um, to meet yeah. energy needs, it can't function as protein anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, which is quite fascinating. Yeah. It's and so, so fascinating you know what's so works. cool? And I always say this, people, people – if you get to, you know, we're kind of referring back to the last episode, if any of you didn't hear it, um, that, you know, how do you, how do you recognize a quack? <laughs> and so, and so um, <laughs> one of the things that is often said is your body's broken and I can help you fix it. Um, when your body does this, it is not broken. It is it is acting in exactly the way it was designed to act in the midst of famine, right? In the midst of not enough calories available. And so instead of just using protein and not having it available for energy, but you've got plenty of protein around, you've got a cow, but you've got nothing else or something, whatever, um, your body says, well, well, we need to to put the nutrients to work for us to survive. And, and exclusive protein use is not what's going to make you survive. You need calories. You need energy, number one, to survive. And so, so that's what the body does. So it is designed in an amazing way with a split personality to switch gears when it needs to. And, and, but, but it isn't ideal. Like, we want optimal. We're not looking for good enough. <laughs> for sure. That's exactly it. And that kind of raises the question as to, you know, something like, well, how much protein should I be consuming? Uh, and on that note, <laughs> we'll leave you guys guessing. A little teaser. <laughs> <laughs> for the next one, for part two. Fabulous. Yep. Uh, we yep. almost got 15 yep. minutes. We're, we're almost. Really, we're pretty good. <laughs> Uh, except for our little intro. So on that note, uh, with a little laughter and a little tease, please uh, keep us in mind and join us for the next episode of Your Food Matters. Bye, Eric. Bye. Thanks, y'all.